going, everybody? It's Jimmy Perry from Power from the website, your go-to resource for all beginning powerlifting information, and I am here to do a deadlift FAQ, answering, I think it's either four questions or five questions on the, got my pick in my head, on the, I don't care, on the deadlift, and I'm also here to say, I think I'm in West Virginia, or, no, I think I'm in West Virginia right now, I decided to take a road trip down, kind of like a cross-country road trip, I'm pretty sure this is Virginia, this is definitely not Michigan, where I'm from, so... But yeah, so I'm going to answer four, uh, four or five questions. I don't remember exactly how many there was that I answered, but it was, it's always around that number. So first, first question is, should you deadlift daily? I already wrote articles on this, but the quick question is, I don't suggest it. But then again, like there's always two sides, multiple sides to everything. The first thing is, I don't suggest it because I lift for weight. But then again, I was just listening to something yesterday where the guy talked about... Um, deadlifting on or doing a movement a particular movement on a regular basis um will help improve like you get better if you it bas basically you get more training hours in if you do something on a regular basis so if you deadlift on a regular basis the only thing is that you wouldn't i mean you get very technically amazing at the movement i don't think you'd be able to lift more much weight because you'd be doing it on a regular basis so your, your nervous system would be shot don't that's another thing he was talking about it on like he was saying do it on a um on movements that aren't like as as taxing on the nervous system so i wouldn't say that that really applies to the deadlift unless you're going to be deadlifting like 135 every day then hey do your thing i just don't suggest it because that's a power movement in my eyes because i'm a power lifter so that's a movement that you're supposed to lift weight on so i wouldn't if you're doing and this is just research also like if you're doing deadlift if you're aiming to hit 400 500 600 whatever on a deadlift or 200 whatever on a deadlift why would you do it every day eventually your grip is going to start failing like i said you're going to hurt yourself i the odds of you hurting yourself will go up that's just what i've noticed it happened to me i was doing it twice a week i wasn't doing it every day but i was doing it twice a week and i was killing myself so and now i'm doing it once so i i do it like every few days it's kind of kind of on the schedule i do it like every three or four days or something like that Basically, it's a pattern. I do it on routine. I do it on a regular basis, but I don't do it every or twice a week. I don't do it. I don't kill myself with it. But then I've been making progress. It works for me. Um, and I also linked articles to it, to this answer that I wrote. So, I mean, check those out. I'm going to link out to this um, article in the sec or in the video. So, and I'm also going to number, the, uh, let you know which number um, questions there are so you can check them out. Um, next question, what way should the average person be able to deadlift? This is a tricky question because it was interesting to me how someone, they try, you can't, I don't think the deadlift has a direct, like the, there's a correlation between, well there probably is a correlation, but not a very strong correlation between weight and your weight, your body mass, and amount of weight deadlift. There is obviously because the bigger your, I'm pretty sure I saw somewhere that the bigger your thigh bones are, like thigh bones can only handle so much weight per square inch or whatever, and if you go over a certain weight, you'll basically crush your thigh bone. So yes, there is a correlation that was wrong, but you know how people say that the bench press goes up, as your bench press goes up, the bigger you are, right? And obviously, the bigger you are, the more you build the deadlift. That I mean, there's like obviously a correlation. So what I just said was what I said previously was completely incorrect but I don't think it's necessarily true that a 200 pound deadlift or 200 pound individual should let's just aim for body weight you should be able to deadlift body weight and here I said that there are there are other standards like if you're a power lifter there are other other standards that I linked out to but let's say body weight is what you should aim for because body weight does have, to have a direct correlation between with weight lifted that's just it's basic science um yeah on the on the article though i mentioned power lifter deadlift standards so um next question can you deadlift at planet fitness uh i tried doing a regular deadlift at planet fitness before and i hurt my back the way that they have smith press machines you could do like uh dumbbell deadlifts but i don't really not a fan of those so they have smith press machines you can do your thing on those i'm just not a fan of them because like they're so weird kind of like they're painful like i you have to go the way you go down it's not really all the pressure is on your middle back and i've known i know a dude who basically deadlifts like that you, i know you've seen those cat people who deadlift and they hurt their they're basically exerting their middle back or the middle of their back all the pressures on that little the midpoint i know a dude who hurt his spine like that he had basically went numb after he did multiple 
deadlifts, heavy deadlifts with that. So, I mean, I wouldn't suggest doing that because you're going to hurt yourself. But I did do Smith press uh, or um, rack pulls kind of or elevated deadlifts. So, basically, I would put the put the bar between, like, you know, I've, you, if, if you heard of a rack pull, you put the bar, like, mid-shin, and then you deadlift it like that. I mean, you, you get more weight up, and it's probably... And, and I also find you get more weight up, and it's probably there. Has, there's a uh, carryover to the regular deadlift. One thing I noticed is that the the Smith press machine uh, bars are thicker than regular barbells, so my grip got amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you. Whereas I was failing on like 400 pounds for a grip, like now I can hold that double overhand <laughs> like for reps. So I know that that's, and that might just be other things too, but I I really feel like that had a direct correlation or a direct effect on my grip. So. I'm going to keep doing it. Well, not. I don't go to Planet Fitness anymore, but I think I am since I'm going to be traveling. So, you know. Our Smith Press machine deadlifts better than no deadlifts. I always I live by the saying, you all, anything is better than nothing. So, if you have any, any no equipment, if you don't have a barbell, you do deadlifts with a, a house stuff. Like, you do it with chairs, whatever. you do. Like, that's you. if you want it, you go get it. That's how that works. Um, next question. What percent of the population can deadlift 500 pounds? I don't have an exact number for this, but let's say 5 to 1% of the population can do that because those are huge numbers. Even though we see that a lot on YouTube, that's like, or YouTube or anything, like that's like, they're, they, those are people that stand out. You don't, most people, I, I'm not going to a gym, I see most people stand under 200. So, um, how do I increase my deadlift strength? The next question I do, well, one thing I did was, well, it depends on what deadlift. For sumo deadlift, I would um, I I found that my conventional deadlift is kind of like an assistance exercise for that movement. So that that's one way. Another way would be, I mean, I do rows, a lot of back exercises to fix uh, what's the word? What's the word when um, there's like a you guys don't know. You can't even talk to me. But when there's a muscular imbalance, like when there's certain weak points in my move, in my uh, deadlift, I, you know, I do systems movements for that, and I do hypertrophy work, and, uh, I mean, that's just stuff that I found, this is stuff that I got online, so that's just one, those are a few ways, and then there's deficit deadlifts, and I think I already said heavy rowing, heavy rowing, I got that from, like, Kaylor Woolham, and uh, I've seen a couple other guys do them, they really have worked, my back, my upper back development is going, like, through the roof, and I've, where, one of my issues with the conventional deadlifts was that my upper back, you know how I think everybody, a lot of people have this issue where they feel a lot of pain in their lower or stress in their lower back after they deadlift. And I found that that was because my upper back was so weak, right? So when I started doing sumo deadlifts, my upper back got a little bit more developed. I started doing heavy shrugs, like, you know, uppers at 300, you know, like heavy, heavy shrugs for reps, right? And I found that my uh, my upper back got a little more, bit more developed, my traps, and then now the, 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 um, the what's the word? The way that the weight is distributed throughout the movement is much more even, and now my back can handle it. So, that's those are a few ways, and you'll see me at the next one. Don't forget to check out the Black Book of Powerlifting. I should probably mention that at the beginning of the video, but the Black Book of Powerlifting. Follow us on, or follow me on, or follow the page on Facebook, or like it on Facebook. Check me out on Pinterest. Check me out on Medium. Check me out on LinkedIn. Uh, subscribe to the page. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment. Whatever. I appreciate anything you, you know, do. I appreciate you guys. Anyone who's watching it. Cause I just, I kind of honestly enjoy talking about this. So it's just, you know, it's fun for me. But, um, yeah, you see me at the next one. Peace.